hello and welcome to today's lecture on main memory organization in the last three lectures we have discussed about various techniques by which the performance of cache memory can be improved like its hit time can be reduced miss rate can be reduced and miss penalty can be reduced now apart from cache memory there is another memory which is also very important which is known as prime memory or main memory and today we shall focus on the main memory uh, first after giving a brief introduction i shall discuss about the various types of main memories that is used in computer systems contemporary computer systems and question naturally arises why do computer designers need to know about memory technology why does this question arise the reason for that is processor performance is usually limited by the memory bandwidth we have seen that uh, as the ic densities are increasing lots of memory will fit into the processor chip so uh, there will be uh, many uh, memory devices will be present in the processor itself on chip and uh, also there will be some memory devices will be off chip particularly uh, you can you can tailor the on chip memory to specific needs and we have seen the uh, the use of instruction cache which can be on chip data cache which can be on chip and another type of buffer known as write buffer that is also used uh, uh, to improve the performance and which is also on chip now uh, let me very briefly give you the characteristics of memory how do you really uh, define or characterize memory devices there are three important parameters as you fabricate the memory devices using semiconductor technology number one is the area how much chip area it occupies then speed how fast it is which is usually specified in terms of access time and the power power dissipation is also very important in the present day context because of several reasons number one is you know in embedded applications the devices are battery operated so life of the i mean usefulness of a particular embedded system is dependent on how long the battery will survive on the other hand in case of uh, your uh, desktop and also in uh, work st work stations and server power dissipation is also very important because we have we know that the perform uh, the, uh, the reliability of the device is dependent on the power dissipation so uh, these are the three important characteristics uh, which are uh, important to in the context of memory devices however there are different ways by which we classify memory devices particularly semiconductor memory devices number one of them is basic operation modes <coughs> the way they operate and in this context the memory devices can be divided into two categories read write or read only in the read write category you have got sram static ram dynamic ram eprom eprom flash memory and so on on the other hand in the read only category you have got mask programmable rom uh, and there is another way you can categorize that is your data storage mode in which the data is stored in this context the basic category is volatile and non volatile volatile means as long as power is there information is available as the power is removed information is lost so uh, some memories like static ram and dynamic ram which are volatile in nature similarly you have got uh, non volatile type again there are two basic categories under this ca under this non volatile type read write where in which you can perform read as well as some write like flash memory 
EPROM, EEPROM, I shall discuss about them in more details. Then read only category, mask programmable ROM. Then another way in which you can categorize is by access mode. Access mode is, there are two basic ways, one is known as random. Random means irrespective of the location, the access time is fixed. Access time is not, does not change irrespective of the location of the memory within the chip. So, random access, that is why we call it random access and ROM, static RAM, dynamic RAM, EPROM, EEPROM, flash memory, these, they, all these belong to uh, random access memories. On the other hand, there are some non-random access memories like uh, serial access memory and content addressable access memory CAM. So, they belong to non-random category because the access time is dependent on uh, the, the location of the memory within the, within the, uh, uh, within the chip. So, uh, with this background, let us see uh, what are the types of semiconductor memories we use in our present day computer systems. Basically, as I said, you have two categories, random access memory and read only memories. And random access memory, uh, there are two types, static RAM, SRAM or dynamic RAM, DRAM. On the other hand, in the read only memory category, you have uh, different names like mask programmable ROM, programmable ROM. Mask programmable ROM is called ROM in sort and programmable ROM is called PROM in sort and electrically programmable ROM in which uh, you can uh, do the uh, programming and uh, I mean reprogramming is allowed uh, in, in both in, progr uh, in programmable ROM, uh, it is if the programming can be only once, but electrically programmable ROM programming can be done more than once. Mm -hmm. And then you have got electrically programmable and erasable ROM, flash memory and NVRAM, which is non-volatile RAM. Uh, as we know, RAM is in general volatile in nature, but in NVRAM what is being done, uh, within the RAM chip, battery is provided. So, when there is no power, then that built-in battery provides the power and making it non-volatile. That is why it is called NVRAM. So, these are the different categories. So, we shall start with static RAM. Uh, static RAM basic organization uh, of a static RAM or rather, rather the basic uh, cell or a, a particular bit can be stored using the using a uh, I mean a bit can be stored in a cell which the organization is somewhat like this. The way it is realized is two inverters connected are connected back to back, then you have got two transistors and when this, this is this, this is connected to what is known as row line and these are connected to what is known as bit line. and this is bit line bar. Okay. So, this is bit line and bit line bar. Now, uh, in this case you can see there are two inverters connected back to back. These inverters can be realized by using CMOS technology as usual and suppose uh, bit this uh, whenever uh, say I mean this is 0 this will make it 1 and this 1 will drive this particular inverter and it will make it 0. So, there will be a kind of regenerative action that means, uh, as, as a particular point becomes 0, the output of the inverter becomes 1, that 1 drives the, the other inverter which forces the other, the, the other point to become 0 and that is how uh, very quickly. Uh, the uh, device will switch from one state to another state and that is the reason why the SRAMs are these, this type of memory is known as static RAM are fast. 
Now, you can realize as I said you can realize the static RAM by using CMOS technology. In that case, you will use uh, the inverters you know by using two transistors that means two this is one inverter. this is an inverter and another inverter is this one then this this is connected to ground or vss the substrate so these two inverters are connected back to back this is connected to vdd and you will use two additional transistors to connect to take the output which are known as bit line and bit line bar and this this is this is the input so this has to be connected to this output and this input needs to be connected to this output so you see two inverters connected back to back and two transistors are used to take the outputs from this point so we get both the uh, output and output bar that means the normal output and its complement both are available from a particular cell and this is the typical six transistor cell of uh, of static ram so this particular static RAM cell provides you low power dissipation. Why low power dissipation? As you can see, uh, since this is a CMOS uh, inverter, when this transistor is on, this transistor is off. Here also, when this transistor is on, this transistor is off. So, there is no static current flow. So, as a consequence, the power dissipation is quite small in this, this type of circuits. However, you have to take the outputs uh, by using two additional transistors. So, you require six transistors and I have already told uh, it provides you high switching speed. The high switching speed comes from uh, the regenerative action that take place which I have already explained. It also provides good noise margin. The reason for that is the outputs switches from rail to rail. That means, VDD to 0, I mean 0 you get uh, 0 volt very close to 0 and the 1 you get very close to VDT. So, rail to rail switching you get and uh, that gives you good noise margin and also it gives you large chip area because you know this uh, this uh, this is a standard CMOS technology can be used and you give uh, the chip area that can be obtained is quite high I mean large chip area uh, can be uh, realized. So, that means you can put lot of uh, these cells on a single chip and uh, nowadays virtually all processors use S stamps as cache memory. I have already mentioned about the uh, we have discussed about the cache memory without mentioning the technology that is being being used in realizing cache memory and the cache memory is uh, cache memory uses this S RAM. Uh, circuits for the realization within the chip. Now, one uh, severe limitation of static RAM is the number of transistors that is required to realize a uh, cell. So, uh, for storing a single bit you require six transistors and obviously, whenever you are thinking in terms of uh, 2 MB, 2 megabyte or 6 megabyte or nowadays you know uh, computer systems have got several gigabyte of main memory. In such a case, the num total number of transistors will be very large and uh, we have to reduce the, I mean we have to find out some alternative way by which the uh, packaging, the, I mean the number of transistors uh, required is small. And this is how you can uh, realize a RAM, RAM chip you can see uh, you have got a memory matrix 128 by 128 and this is the row decoder, this is the column decoder. What is being done? 
the memory is organized in terms of in two dimensional matrix. So, you have got say 128 by 128 memory cells are present here. So, this is your memory matrix. And then the here you apply some of the address lines say uh, some of the address lines and this is known as row decoder, row decoder and row decoder output is applied and also you have got column decoder, here is your column decoder. and to which you apply some other address lines. That means, the lower order address lines you apply here say A 0 to A 3 and here you apply A 4 to A 10. That means, and this is the column I O. This column I O here you have got sense amplifier and other things which communicate which receives information uh, from the which interacts with the this memory matrix. And then uh, you have got the input input data control input data control here you ha here the outputs are taken from here so here you will get get say uh, io 7 to I O 0. This means, you are storing 8 bit data uh, in this. So, 8 bit data comes out through these lines and of course, you will require some additional inputs like as it is shown in this diagram, uh, output enable, write enable, chip selects, these are used for controlling the devices. That means, and uh, so, major components that is present here is memory cell array. This is the memory cell array. Then you require two decoders column decoder and row decoder, I O control circuit, this is the I O control circuit, column I O control circuit and uh, the I O interface circuit. So, this is the column I O interface circuit is connected here. So, through the same lines you get the input as well as you get the output. So, uh, these lines are bidirectional on the other hand the address lines are unidirectional and you have got several control signals output enable means whenever this output enable is uh, output enable is uh, lower this is low active when it is 0 then only output is available otherwise it is tri stated. So, uh, this chip uh, can be represented in this way here you have got n address lines in addition to that you will be having chip select you will be having output enable and also write enable. These are all low active and here you will be having 2 to the power n into m bit assuming that there are m lines available uh, at the output. So, this is the basic organization. So, the, these are the address lines, these are the data lines and here you can see that the control within this chip is performed with the help of these three signals C S output enable and write enable. And when this chip select is high as I said it is low active represented by this symbol. When it is high irrespective of these lines you will get the output will not be selected. So, it will be it will be not selected. And uh, I O pins, these I O pins, these are essentially the I O pins data lines uh, will be in the high, uh, uh, high impedance state. So, high Z. Now, only when the, uh, the chip select is low, this is a low active and then you can have other variations like output, uh, output enable is high, write enable is high. In this case, uh, output is disabled. Uh, 
again in this case it will be high z and uh, when the output enable is low and this is high then you will get the output. So, this is essentially read mode of operation that means the output at the output you will get uh, the uh, data that is being stored. So, this is data out and similarly whenever it is low and this is low this is high output enable is out irrespective of this that means this can be uh, independent of this when write enable then it is a write mode and you will get data in. So, this is how the chip is controlled and uh, the organization is shown. So, the address is what is partitioned into row address and column address, row address decoder enables one of the rows and the column address decoder enables one of the wards and that is how the communication take place with the outside, outside world. So, this is the basic static RAM, organi RAM chip organization and a write operation is done by driving the bit lines uh, z one, o, uh, 1 and 0 and selecting the row and that will perform the writing. On the other hand read will involve precharging the uh, IO line the bit lines uh, bit and bit bar to VDD and both the lines are precharged to VDD. So, it is based on precharge logic and then you have to select the row uh, by providing the row ad uh, the address and the cell pulls one line low depending on um, and data being stored there depending on what is stored uh, it will pull down one of the low that will be sensed by the sense amplifier on column uh, and uh, sense amplifier is on and column detects the difference between the bit and bit bar. So, there is a kind of differential amplifier uh, which acts as sense amplifier and then that difference is reflected at the output and you get a output. So, this is in nutshell how the static RAM read write operation take place and now let us focus on dynamic RAM. As I mentioned the number of transistors in, in a static RAM is quite large 6. So, if we want to reduce the number of transistors then we have to go for some other technique and that has led to uh, dynamic RAM cells. So, it started with and four transistor dynamic RAM cell as we shall see this dynamic RAM technology has evolved over the years. So, starting with uh, four transistor cell to single transistor cell. For example, in this particular diagram you have got four transistors. So, uh, essentially those pull up transistors that means uh, the pull up transistors are not present here, but uh, you have got two transistors T1 and T2 which are acting as the basic cell storing information and two addi additional transistor those uh, past transistors uh, T3 and T4 for getting the output on bit line and bit line bar. So, in the quest for smaller chip area four transistor DRAM cell emerge and this the, the this is also volatile in nature, uh, but where does the information is stored? Information is not stored in the flip flop this is not acting as a flip flop information is stored in the gate capacitance, gate cap which gate capacitance for example, although this capacitance is shown here this is essentially the capacitance of this transistor. So, gate capacitance of this transistor these are parasitic capacitances you are not connecting any ad additional capacitance and this capacitance capacitor is also corresponding to uh, this particular gate. So, so in these gate capacitances you are storing information in the form of charge. So, you are storing charge uh, and uh, obviously, one of the uh, capacitors will be discharged if this, this transistor is on, if T 2 is on this capacitor will be discharged and if ten, this transistor is off this transistor will be uh, charged. So, that in that charge and discharge signal I mean which one will be charged that will come from these bit lines that means, uh, if it is one this one will come here that will make this transistor on. So, which will pull down this capacitor this charge to 0. So, uh, information that is being stored in the capacitor will, not, will be present, but how long it will be available. If you turn it on information will be lost that will that will make it that makes it uh, volatile, but 
say suppose you have stored some information one is stored in this particular uh, capacitor some charge one corresponds to storage of some charge zero corresponds to no charge so that has been stored question is how long it will uh, the information will be retained it has been found that the i mean any capacitor has a property known as uh, it will uh, per, it will uh, lead that the charge will be leaked away so here also the information that is being stored in these capacitors uh, that will be lost because of the leakage of the charge and that is the reason why uh, another technique is used that is known as retracing so to retain information the cells must be refreshed periodic periodically that means uh, the refresh controller will read the value and and as the voltage goes down because of discharge it will again recharge the capacitor uh, where one is stored <coughs> so whenever you realize in this form there is marginal area advantage over 6 transistor ram so you don't have don't get much benefit because uh, you are uh, saving two transistors but uh, uh, but the capacitor should be quite uh, rela i mean relatively large uh, so that information is stored in other words these transistor uh, transistors will be of little bigger dimension so you don't have much advantage and that has led to another uh, type uh, transis another type of cell known as three transistor cell so in this three transistor cell uh, here you, you have you, you are not using four transistors but uh, you have a single transistor and the gate capacitance of this transistor is used to store information and then you are taking the output with the help of again uh, two transistors this is your uh, this is your uh, this this is connected to that word line and this is connected to bit line and this is also connected to bit line so this is bit line z and this is bit line right so in this case the operation is different here you are applying a right line right signal uh, and uh, for read you are using this is for right uh, this is for uh, this is for write and this is for read how it is happening say you can see the bit line is connected here if it is one and if, as you make this transistor on this capacitor will be charged will charge uh, through this transistor this is how you can write information in this uh, gate capacitance of this transistor so this is the parasitic capacitance and here the charge is stored and one is stored here now for reading purpose you make this transistor is uh, this transistor on that means whenever you are uh, uh, reading this transistor is on if you one is stored here this transistor will be on and so uh, this will be uh, zero you will get uh, i mean one is stored here then uh, you will get uh, if you perform this read operation you, this will be connected here if one is stored you will get zero here complement of it you are getting here and if if zero is stored this transistor is off and so you will get uh, one here so you can see uh, you you get the complement of that output uh, output uh, corresponding to what is being stored here and in this case uh, the gate capacitor t2 is used to store information two additional transistors are used for read and write as i have told and it has been found that this is faster than 40 cell uh, reading the 3t cell is non destructive here you know uh, since it is isolated by this gate the operation is not destructive that means reading can be done with the help of these two transistors and also uh, the fabrication process is compatible with cmos so this is another technology that was used for realizing dynamic ram cells now let us come to uh, 
a significantly different uh, realization where you are using two transistor dynamic ram cell. In two transistor dynamic ram cell, you can see there is no uh, gate capacitance present here. So, you have to explicitly fabricate these capacitors. So, the two transistor ram cell is essentially an extension of 40 ram cell with the exception that you are not using the gate capacitance to uh, store information because you are using some uh, to explicit uh, to, uh, to two capacitors are explicitly fabricated which will store the information uh, and uh, you get both bit and bit line bar information depending on what values are stored. So, if this is one then uh, this will be charged if this is I mean when this bit line is one bit line bar will be 0 and that will discharge this capacitor. So, both 0 and 1 the complementary values will be stored and as you select this uh, these two transistor by activating this word line then you will get b, uh, the bit line and bit line bar at the output. So, this is the uh, two transistor dynamic ram cell. Uh, however, uh, this was also not very uh, popular and this is not very popular in the present context. We have gone for what is known as one transistor uh, dynamic ram cell. So, here you can see you have got only uh, one transistor. So, uh, only one transistor is here and that capacitor which is explicitly fabricated is present, present here. This is the storage capacitor and you have got two, two, uh, two, say two lines. This is your right line. Uh, for read and write word line right, re for performing read and write and this is the bit line. This is also used for read and write. So, this is word line, this is the bit line. How it works? So, suppose uh, the bit line is 1, you have to store 1 and then whenever you activate this word line, this transistor is on and it will charge the capacitor. On the other hand, whenever it is 0, cap charging the capacitor means it is 1. Now, if you if it is 0, then of course, uh, this capacitor will discharge through the uh, through this transistor and it will there will be no charge uh, as you write it. So, writing is uh, I mean writing is done in this way uh, by uh, by charging this capacitor or discharging it. Uh, by turning the uh, this this uh, the uh, uh, I mean word select word line transistor on. Uh, however, let us uh, let us see how do you perform read. So whenever you are performing read, then again you are activating these transistors. Now the charge store available here will be available on the bit line. So it has been it is, it is found now that this, this this is no longer isolated by a gate that means this 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 particular capacitor is no longer isolated by a gate it is directly connected to the bit line that means all the charge that is being stored here gets transferred to the bit line of course there will be sense amplifier this is the difference in the charge on bit and bit line bar will help you to get the output but unfortunately this capacitor will get discharged so in other words read is destructive read operation is destructive <coughs> so this is a significant improvement in the dram evolution uh, by switching to this one transistor dynamic ram cell so only one addi uh, additional capacitor is explicitly fabricated for storage purpose in addition to a single transistor uh, to store one it is charged to VDD minus VT. So, you are not charging to VDD because since it is charged through this transistor as you know there will be a voltage drop of VT. So, you will get VDD minus VT here and that will uh, the, it will be charged to either VDD minus VT or it will uh, discharge to 0 volt. And as I explained read operation is destructive and you require sense amplifier for the purpose of reading because this signal has to go to sense amplifier to amplify the signal and so read operation is followed by restore restoration operation that means 
if there was one was stored there you have to write back one you have to restore the information and that is uh, that's why the dynamic rams are slower and of course the advantage here is you require very small chip area you can go up to say 256 megabit on a chip or more nowadays you can have large number of uh, transistors on a single chip and another unfortunate part is that the process technology is not compatible with CMOS process te technology. So, uh, up to, uh, up to uh, you know three transistor we have seen uh, the, pro the, the, the dynamic MOS technology uh, circuits dynamic RAMs uh, transistors uh, uh, dynamic RAM was compatible with the CMOS technology, but two transistor one transistor cells are not compatible with CMOS technology. So, you have to go for uh, an incompatible technology to fabricate the chip. However, uh, because of large packaging density, this is very popular and widely used nowadays. And this, this particular uh, type of uh, dynamic RAMs are virtually used in all desktop servers uh, uh, as main memory and this is the typical organization. Here also you have got row decoder, column selector and IO circuit and at the intersection you have got one cell, one transistor cell and this is these are the word lines and these are the column lines and here you get data. So, row and column address together are applied and which actually selects a particular bit and you get a single bit at the output. And <coughs> and you can see this is the typical DRAM organization of a uh, of, of a commercial chip. So here you are using uh, several address lines A0 to A10. Now uh, another important uh, change that is the address is given. Same address lines are used for applying to row address and column address. Earlier we have seen that row address and column address here you can see the row address lines and column address lines are applied I mean which are lower order bit goes here and higher order bit goes here. But in dynamic RAM that is not done. Uh, the reason for that is that num you want to reduce the number of pins the total number of pins increases uh, as the uh, size of the memory increases. So, suppose you have got 64 kilobyte or 64 k uh, bit let us assume it is bit organized 64 kilobit. So, you will require 16 address lines. So, instead of applying all the, all the address lines together you use 8 line then another 8 line. So, this is for 64 kilobit, but whenever you have got uh, much larger capacity say 256 kilobit or 1 gigabit then the number of lines will be more. So, you are saving 8 pins by applying the address uh, I mean row address and column address separately. So, that is what is being shown here for example, in this case total number of address lines is 20 but you are using row address and column address you are, you are using two separate buffers one for uh, so, uh, storing the row another for storing the column. So, row address and column address are coming from the same lines and as a consequence you will require two signals row address uh, row address uh, I mean select and column address uh, select. So, row address select and column address select these two inputs are there whenever you are applying row address. Uh, then you have to activate this row address select and whenever you are applying column address then you have to activate the column address select. So, uh, in addition to write enable and output enable two additional control signals are necessary to control the chip. So, uh, and you have got a multiplexer uh, which is ne needed for uh, refreshing the memory that means the refreshing takes place row by row and that is the reason why you are using a refresh counter. So, refresh counter output is multiplex with the with the row address either this row address is applied or when you are when you are refreshing then the refresh counter output is applied to the row decoder 
and which selects one of the rows in the memory and that that entire row gets refreshed not one at a one cell at a time but entire row gets selected so this is the refresh circuitry and column decoder output uh, column decoder uh, column uh, address is applied here to the column decoder and you get the uh, two lines uh, data input buffer data output buffer and through these you get the uh, go get the out, uh, outputs uh, data lines so in this particular case it is shown that there are four data lines but uh, in in the in the present nowadays uh, always the drams are bit organized what do you really mean by that that means you will be it is organized in the form of 2 to the power n into 1 so the number of data lines is 1 and again n is divided by n by 2 and n by 2 that is row address and column address so you are the total number of pins required is n by 2 plus 1 i mean for address and data of course for control and other purposes you will require four more so total number of lines will be required n by 2 plus 1 plus 4 so the number of pins that is required is significantly reduced by using this bit organized memory and uh, also by using row address and column address and as i mentioned main memory is always dynamic ram based dynamic ram it is called dynamic since needs to be refreshed periodically so uh, you may be asking why the name dynamic so to uh, make the difference with static uh, since it has to be refreshed at the interval of about 8 millisecond or uh, uh, and that uh, and that's why the name dynamic ram and this refreshing causes variability in average memory access time so we have seen in case of static ram we are uh, we, there is no uh, need for refreshing so here there is additional time that is re required for refreshing and so that will contribute to the average memory access time because some time will waste wasted for the purpose of refreshing and as i have already mentioned the address is divided into two halves row address ac uh, row access strobe ras and column access strobe that is column uh, i mean cas these two signals are required for uh, uh, cas row address uh, row access strobe and column access strobe those uh, signals are to be provided uh, for giving the uh, providing the address in uh, i mean in twice i mean n by 2 in n by 2 now the access time uh, and cycle time is also different in case of dynamic ram so in uh, we know that access time is the time between when a read request is made and when the desired word word arrives on the other hand cycle time is the minimum time between two request in the memory so dynamic rams require a data to be written back after read we have seen you have to do the refreshing that's why the access time and cycle time Uh, is different in the context of dynamic ram which is not true in the context of static ram so this is a brief history of dynamic ram it was uh, it patented back in 1968 by denard but it was not commercialized significantly cheaper than sram one transistor and one capacitor versus six transistors and one bit is represented by a high or low as we have already seen and one very important aspect is uh, static ram is i mean it is significantly slower than static ram so sram is used for on chip memory like cases and scratch pads and dynamic ram is always off chip so dynamic ram uh, it is off chip because of two reasons number one is that technology is different processor is fabricated by the, by using cmos technology dynamic ram Uh, is not compatible with that so it has to be off chip separate chip so this is this is the pin pin uh, layout uh, is shown so just to compare here you can see 8 megabit ep ep rom so with the help of uh, 32 pin chip dual n line pin package you can get 8 megabit ep rom on the other hand you can see only by using 24 pin chip you can have 16 megabit uh, dynamic ram here 
uh, as I mentioned, you have got, uh, uh, I mean, multiplex address that A0 to A9, those two train address lines are applied in a multiplex scanner selected by RAS and CAS. And of course, there are four data lines present here. It is not bit organized, but um, nowadays, since the capacity has increased, uh, it is bit or it is made bit organized. <coughs> okay. Now, let us focus to read only memory. So far, we have discussed about the RAM technology. Now, let us consider the read only memory. Now, you may be asking why do you require read only memory? You see, whenever you turn the computer on, then there will be nothing in the RAM. So, how the CPU will work? CPU is a dump device it has to get instruction from somewhere. So, in other in a where from it will come? It has to be stored in a memory which is uh, which is uh, non volatile and that is what is stored in ROM. Just like you know when a child bonds, the child must born with some built in intelligence and with the help of which uh, that child starts uh, taking uh, I mean communicating with the environment mother. Uh, t, uh, and uh, um, relatives and parents and starts crying uh, by making the difference. So, it bonds with some built in intelligence, then subsequently it acquires intelligence from uh, uh, t uh, teacher, father and environment and nature. So, you require read only memory in your system. For example, in your computer system that BIOS basic input output system is stored in the ROM and uh, the, the, this is the basic organization of a read only memory. As you can see despite its Gandrio's name, it has got two, two distinct components. One is known as decoder as you require in any memory system and uh, uh, a decoder is there. In addition to the de decoder you require encoder. So, you will require decoder and encoder and you can see the decoder depending on the number of lines, if there are n address lines, it will generate 2 to the power n lines at the output of the decoder and at, at any particular instant one of them will be active as you know that is the basic function of a decoder. So, it will select one of the lines and that will go to the encoder. Now, in the encoder as you can see the you can have uh, dots corresponding to different lines. Now, you can store 0 and 1 uh, in these uh, at the crossing of these lines. In the encoder, you can see this in some places there are dots, in some crossings there is no dot, uh, indicating that there is some device, a, it may be a diode or a transistors and sometimes nichrome wire that is being used uh, at e each of these junctions. And depending on what is present as at these junctions, the different types of ROMs are realized. In case of mask programmable ROM, that uh, why it is called mask programmable ROM? Uh, you know, in the factory, uh, a mask is created, and that decides at what junction there will be a diode or a transistor, and what juncture there will be no diode or a transistors. So, depending on what you have to store. For example, here 1011 1, 1, that is being stored and on the second line you have stored 0101. 0, 1, 0, 1. So, that means presence of a device makes it, uh, I mean uh, makes it uh, allows you to store 1. Why? Because whenever the decoder is activated this line is 1, that 1 gets transmitted to the, uh, to the column line uh, through this, uh, through this link, may be a diode or a transistor or a, it can be a nichrome wire. So, in the factory these are fabricated that is why it is called mask programmable ROM or simply ROM. Now, in case of programmable ROM, uh, you know uh, the mask programmable ROM is fabricated in the factory. So, this can be done only when it is produced in mass scale that means, you require millions such uh, millions of such devices only then uh, you can order a ROM and which can be fabricated uh, in a in a factory. So, uh, that is used uh, only when you require a particular device 
uh, particular type of encoding in large numbers. On the other hand, this programmable ROM is user programmable. User programmable means the user can do the programming, but programming can be done only once. How? Uh, so suppose you have got a, a nichrome wire connected here. So, that nichrome wire can be burnt uh, by programming. So, with the help of a prom, pro, prom programmer, you can you can uh, you can burn the connection between the color row line and column column line, and so it cannot really reconstruct it. That's why you you can do it only once. That's why in programmable ROM, the writing can be done only once. However, reading can be done many times. That's why it is uh, programmable read-only memory. Now, the third type electrically programmable ROM, in this case the programming can be done by electrical means. So, by electrical means the uh, electrical means the programming can be done and in such a case uh, the, uh, the uh, device that is being used is little different a MOS transistor is used and in the MOS transistor you know that uh, 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 in, in the MOS transistor, uh, there is a floating gate uh, which I shall show in the next slide that is being used. For example, this is the technology that is being used in case of electrically erasable and programmable ROM. So, in, in case of uh, sorry, this is in case of EEPROM, it is electrically programmable, but uh, erasing, erasing is done by exposing to ultraviolet light. So, this is not really EEPROM, e -ROM, but it is EEPROM one you will be there. So, can be programmed and erased uh, actually uh, there are two techniques. In, in the first case, in case of EPROM, what is done? The programming is done by applying a high voltage to the, to the select gate and there is some electrons get accumulated in the floating gate and, uh, and that floating gate and the that high voltage that actually overcomes the barrier and electrons can be uh, law, uh, put in this uh, uh, put, put in this particular position and uh, that remains in those uh, i mean near the gate and then for the purpose of erasing there is an optical window which you have must have seen the the, the electron can be taken out and it will come out of the because of the energy that is being obtained from the uh, from the uh, from the ultraviolet lines uh, source and electrons comes out. So, uh, again uh, it becomes 0 that means whenever you do the programming uh, you can say 0 is stored and whenever you do the raging uh, you, uh, all the cells become 1. On the other hand in case of electrically programmable the an another variety electrically programmable and erasable ROM you can do the programming and erasing electrically. How it is done? You can this is what is written here can be programmed and erased many times over and over erasing sets all the bits to 0 and so you require off system erasing Sele selective erasing is uh, not possible and this is low cost and easy availability. That means, erasing is done all the time in case of EPROM, uh, but in case of electrically erasable and programmable ROM, which is a version of electrically erasable and programmable ROM, you can do the writing uh, uh, and reading selectively. So, this allows a block to be erased or written in, in a single operation in a flash. That means, instead of a single word in case of electrically erasable and programmable ROM, writing is done word by word, but in this case it is done block by block. That is the difference between uh, EEROM and flash memory. So, floating gate avalanche injection metal oxide semiconductor is used for the, for the implementation of a cell and electrons are trapped in the floating gate as I have already mentioned in the and this is shown here. So, those electrons get tapped uh, uh, you know trapped in these floating gate as you can see here. Now, by applying a high voltage you are trapping electrons are getting trapped here and that is being stored here and then if you remove that high voltage the threshold voltage of the device increases. So, for those transistors uh, I mean where those electrons have been trapped 
their threshold voltage is high. For other transistors where the electrons have not been stored, the threshold voltage is uh, low. So that 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 is will that that is be, that will that will be used for the purpose of reading and writing. And writing a byte requires creating a new block. Old block is copied along with the byte. And so the, this you can do block by block in flash memory. So this, the reading can be done at the speed of dynamic RAM. So uh, at the speed of nanosecond, you can do the reading. However, writing is quite complicated because you have to apply a high voltage and that high voltage has to be applied for certain duration so that those electrons are get trapped and that takes a time of the order of millisecond. So, writing is a complex operation even in flash memory. <coughs> and memory capacity is increased by reducing the area dedicated to control uh, erasing because uh, instead of con uh, controlling byte by byte, you are you are controlling uh, block by block. So, number of writes is restricted due to wear in insulating wear oxide layer used to take 12 volt to write. So, present generation flash operates at 2.7 volt that means, when you are using in the read only mode voltage that you require is 2.7 volt, but for the purpose of uh, writing you require 12 volt. And nowadays you can go for multi level flash technology. What do you really mean by multi level flash technology? So, this is very interesting you, you, we know that for uh, 0 it can be 0 volt and for 1 it is let us assume 2.7 volt. Now, what can be done you can if you uh, if you are allowed to store an intermediate voltage may be 1.3 volt then what you can do that intermediate voltage can be used for the purpose of storing say 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 2 I mean 2 bits can be simultaneously stored by storing multi level voltages in those capacitors and different levels of voltages and instead of storing only one bit it will be possible to store more than one bit that means this may correspond to uh, this may correspond to 0 0 this may correspond to say uh, 1 1 this may correspond to 1 0 and uh, somewhat like that that means if intermediate voltages you can store say one it can be 1.0 or it can be say 1.5 that may correspond to 0 1 I mean just I am writing arbitrarily, but uh, this is the basic idea of multi level uh, flash map technology. So, this is possible, but uh, not yet commercially realized. So, here is a comparison between flash memory and EEPROM. Uh, I have already explained that uh, flash memory is faster because you are writing in terms of blocks. Uh, and flash can be written in system contrast to EEPROM. In EEPROM cannot be written uh, in the system, but flash memory can be written uh, writing in, in system. So, control circuitry required for erasing is much less leading to higher capacity of flash memory as I have already told. Anyway, so with this uh, we have come to the end of our discussion on different types of uh, technologies that is used in your uh, in realizing memory devices. Uh, and in my next lecture, I shall discuss about how you can reduce the uh, this uh, main memory access time. Essentially, that will help you to reduce the miss penalty. So, just like improving the cache memory performance, we would like to improve the main memory performance. So, what are the techniques that can be used for improving the main memory performance? That I shall discuss in my next lecture. Thank you.